Yeah, yeah, we tried to top that. Huh? You did. Uh, that was the whole mission, the whole night. Uh, everybody who tuned into the World Cup, tuned into our game. Well, if I had known that, we should have put that out there. But you guys definitely put on a show. To be down by 17 at halftime, what was your overall message to this group coming out in that second half? Yeah, pretty unhappy with ourselves at, at halftime. Just the overall concentration level, which, which we talked about before the game. And so uh, it, were, it wasn't where it needed to be. Um, luckily, we had another half to play. Uh, again, another third quarter by that group. 25 points in the third, 25 points in the fourth. So to be able to hold them to 50 points in, in the half, uh, turned our concentration level up, our want up, our uh, need to, uh, all of the above to get the win. And for Kevin Durant to have 26 of the 44 points in that third quarter, what did you see that allowed him to get going offensively? Yeah, you know, he was really trying to get a pulse in the field of, they were doing different things, whether not doubling on the post, sometimes doubling on the post, doubling in, uh, in pick and roll cover. So really just an efficient night of finding out where he was going to get his shots from. Uh, I think he was pretty patient overall. And then... Uh, when the water started running, it, it, it started pouring. So it was it was really good to see. In your mind, I mean, what, listen, we've seen Kevin kind of go off quickly and ignite fast. But I mean, what was it, I guess, that enabled him to do it tonight to turn so uh, so abruptly? Yeah, Brian, I think the the mix of, you know, he turned the corner a couple of times. He didn't get it to go for him at the rim a few times, but he stayed with it. And so whether that was, I think, setting up the three ball game, uh, which when that thing's going in is extremely tough to guard him because so much space around him, man. We try to put more space around him throughout the course of the night. But I, I thought his early attacks to the rim, some successful, some unsuccessful, set up the threes, which got him going. And probably an even more glaring change, at least from the outside. Nick looked like he struggled defensively in the first half, but yet he came up big at the end. What was going wrong for him in the first half? And how did he change it to going right by him? Yeah, I think overall the concentration level that we tried to give the Bogdanovich and Burks at the beginning of the game, they made some adjustments, which had us thinking a little bit. Uh, overall, we want this team to play with instincts and feel and not be thinking too much. Uh, when he gets back to just guarding and defending and jumping out at the basketball and wanting to guard, using his instincts, that's what he got back to in the second half. I know it's not something that you want to see to have to come back the second game after being down by double figures, but what can you say just about the resiliency and the poise, as you always mentioned, that this group has shown you, especially when it comes quarter by quarter or play by play? Well, it's interesting. You, you, you learn about your team in stretches like that also, whether who's talking in the huddle, what is the communication, uh, what is the self-talk at that time to, from individuals. And so all that I'm trying to process at the same time, who can I put into the game? Which buttons can we push? What units? Which we had different ones out there tonight. So that piece of it um, uh, allows me to really stress to this team that we're going to put a group out there who's playing hard and we're going to try to win every single night, however way we do it. Chuck, a little bit more on Kevin. I mean, he had 20 points in three minutes or three minutes and three seconds. What's it like to have a guy like that can do that on your team? It was nice because the score was you know, coming back in our favor a little bit, and we were able to take the lead. And, uh, you know, you're thinking at that part of the game is how are you going to climb back into it without thinking too far ahead? And then he was able to string some possessions together. And, and you see the momentum piece of it. Guys were able to defend better. Uh, we got stops. We got rebounds at that time just because – the shots that he was making were going in. Jack, you've obviously been around him closely these last few years. You watched him from a distance for those years before. Do you think this is the best top to bottom that you've seen him? You know, the teams throw everything at him. And uh, so that piece of it, I think it warrants that conversation. Uh, just because at the end of the night, and we talked about it a little bit the other day, you look at the stat sheet and it's an extremely efficient night. Uh, and so that's, that's an incredible task to do when the defense is you know, geared towards you every single night. Uh, I love that he's doing it in multiple ways, uh, whether it's passing the basketball, whether it's on the post, mid post, at the elbow, three ball. Uh, you just see it in a, in a variety of ways, uh, which means he, he's, his game is getting better still, which is which is. In, Pretty difficult to say, but some truth behind it. And Jack, do you have an update on TJ? We saw we saw him. It seemed like he got up slow right at the end of the half. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing. Um, uh, nothing from the performance team. He was able to go back in. Just use a different unit to, to finish the game.
Thanks, John. Can we okay. Patty when you get back? Uh, yes, yes. So uh, the update on Patty, um, man, non-COVID illness, which, you know, hit him pretty hard. I guess that's going around a little bit. And so, um, um, but the report back that he was feeling a lot better from the previous two days for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay.